Okay, so now I've uh, selected precipitation, um, and we're going to look at the change in precipitation over the surface of the globe, uh, annual mean surface temp uh, uh, precipitation, uh, differenced the first five years minus uh, this, the last five years minus the first five years uh, of the simulation. Okay, data one minus data two. And uh, this is what we get. Uh, again, let's use a more sensible scale. So we'll go from minus 3.09 to plus 3.09. Um, so we can see that overall uh, precipitation uh, is uh, increasing over the globe, um, as we already saw when we plotted out the global average precipitation. But there's some strong regional variations. Uh, there is uh, a concentration of increased precipitation in a band near the equator. Um, the largest increases in precipitation are near the equator, uh, where we have the intertropical convergence zone rising uh, motion in the atmosphere. Um, and since the surface is warmer and there's more water vapor in the atmosphere, we get more rainfall in the region where rainfall tends to occur, which is this uh, inter uh, uh, this intertropical convergence zone. Um, but as we go to the subtropics, we can see large patches of white. Um, and what that's indicating is that, in fact, uh, in the descending branch of the Hadley circulation, where we tend to see uh, deserts, um, that uh, region is actually expanding poleward somewhat. And so that uh, region of drying um, is now expanding towards the poles, and that's why we see these large areas of uh, at least um, small uh, decreases in rainfall in subtropical regions, um, contrasting with uh, the large increases we see uh, closer to the equator. And then as we get into higher latitudes again, you can start to see that there's a uh, larger tendency again for increased precipitation in the subpolar latitudes and that is associated uh, with a migration poleward of the uh, mid-latitude uh, band of frontal precipitation in both hemispheres. So when we look at the pattern of rainfall there's a far richer uh, pattern of regional variation um, that uh, tells us that in fact uh, if we want to understand um, projected changes in rainfall, it's important not just to uh, look at global averages or hemispheric averages, but uh, look at the underlying uh, pattern of changes, which is fairly uh, complex even in this case. Of course, this is a relatively simple model. In uh, state-of-the-art models today, uh, the patterns of uh, projected change in variables like rainfall are even more uh, complex, even more regionally variable, uh, because these models uh, are able to uh, resolve uh, important changes in ocean and atmosphere circulation that impact on regional uh, precipitation. Uh, for example, changes in the El Nino Southern Oscillation phenomenon, which has a large impact on regional patterns of rainfall. But even in this fairly basic, uh, this fairly primitive model from the 1980s, uh, we can see um, this pattern of a latitudinal variation in how uh, rainfall changes. Even on the average, uh, there is an increase in global rainfall. Um, that change in rainfall is strongly regionally variable, and there are some regions in the subtropics where this model projects a, a modest decrease in rainfall. So uh, we'll uh, leave our discussion of EDGCM there. This, again, is a relatively uh, primitive uh, climate model by modern standards. And yet we can see um, some of the uh, changes that we know are projected by uh, more uh, state-of-the-art climate models uh, with regard to changes in temperature, changes in rainfall, changes in uh, sea ice. And so as we go on into uh, our uh, next uh, couple lessons and we start to look at projections of state-of-the-art climate models, we will see that many of these uh, predictions with the earliest models are borne out uh, by uh, more realistic models that are available today.